All right, look, I'm not gonna mess about. This is the best $589 you can spend. And today I'm gonna tell you why. Today's video is sponsored by Fly, the 3D social networking app that's bringing the social back to social media. Fly's mission is to bring people closer together in the places and cities they frequent, extending the real world into a virtual one. Fly focuses on communities and people near you by reimagining the social media timeline with a beautiful 3D map centered around points of interest. Restaurants, museums, monuments, landmarks are all clickable and allow you to post locationally. This lets you immerse yourself in your community rather than scroll through disjointed, unrelated timelines. Fly is an innovative way to bring your community to life and find friends, events, and locations around you in the real world. It's a digital metaverse that extends rather than replaces reality. Plus, right now you can enter their giveaway for a chance to win either a PS5 for first place or a $200 Visa gift card for the next five winners who post with the hashtag I love this place. If you want to give Fly a try as well as enter for those giveaway prizes, you can check out the link in the description below. And now, let's get back to the video. So in case you couldn't tell from the context, title of the video, or the shape of this box, this is a Mac Mini. But specifically, this is the refurbished M1 Mac Mini. Now, I picked this up because, quite frankly, I couldn't resist it. This cost me $589 for the base model Mac Mini. And that's a pretty insane deal. But first, I wanna see what the Apple Refurbished experience is like in 2022, because I haven't bought anything from Apple Refurbished in a really long time, like maybe 10 years. So that's gonna change today. This is the box that you get. It's very simple. It just says Mac Mini. We don't even get a picture for $589, but don't worry about that. So let's go ahead and pop this open. Should be pretty simple to do. Not a whole lot of frills in the box here with a refurbished Mac Mini. And as you might expect, apart from the lack of picture on the box, this thing looks basically the same as a new one. We don't get a lot in here. Okay, good. We do get one giant Apple sticker. That makes this whole purchase worthwhile. So yeah, we got a Mac Mini. We got a power cable. What more do you need? All right, so we can go ahead and unwrap the old Mac Mini. This is a very familiar experience. Basically, exactly the same as buying a brand new one. And sure enough, if you look at the exterior of this thing, you would not be able to tell that this isn't technically new. Folks, that is a $589 M1 Mac Mini. And that is a truly remarkable price point. That is unheard of, and in fact, in my opinion, unbeatable, because this package is simply superb. Now, do I wish it was a slightly smaller package? Sure, because I mean, when you take a look at the Mac Mini of this size, it's not exactly large, but if you look at just the logic board for the Mac Mini, well, <laughs> clearly there are some extras that we don't exactly need. The biggest thing that takes up a lot of space is the power supply. I happen to have one right here, almost the same size as the logic board. And the long and the short of it is, this is a very tiny and very capable machine in a very old and not very exciting enclosure. And those things combine to create basically the best deal in tech right now. Now, since this video is all about value, I figured we'd break out the old iMac DIY studio display because you can build this thing for around the same price as the Mac Mini, which means all in for this setup, which by the way, does include the keyboard and the mouse, which came with the original iMac. You could build a whole 5K M1 Mac Mini setup for around $1,200. That is a truly insane price point. And as far as anyone else would be able to tell looking at this, they just think you're an idiot. They think you bought an iMac and a Mac Mini. But we know, we know, ta-da, 1200 bucks, all of this. Honestly, it looks fantastic. Sure, yeah, a little dated. This iMac design is from 2012. This Mac Mini, also from 2012. But you might be wondering at this point, Luke, this setup looks like it's 10 years old. It costs $1,200. 
and it's a boring Mac Mini. Why is this interesting? Well, to explain to you why this particular $589 Mac Mini is so astounding, we need to go back in time. Let's rewind all the way back to Macworld of 2005. This was the day the original Mac Mini was announced. It was a keynote with some, shall we say, mixed results. One of the products Apple announced that day was, well, this. This is one of the phones, and you can see playlists, artist albums, songs. You, so we're very, very excited about that. And they also announced, to a very quiet audience, this. The iPod Shuffle, and this is what it looks like. It's really tiny. little awkward. But the big thing, the thing that has stuck around for the past 17 years, was this. The original Mac Mini. And this is what it looks like. It's very, very tiny. And Apple was very clear right from the start about why the Mac Mini existed. It was positioned as an entry-level device that was essentially a tiny Mac in a tiny box. But I don't think even Apple predicted quite how successful the Mac Mini would be, or in the ways that it could be successful. Because in the past couple of years, Mac Minis have been bought arguably more by institutions and enterprises than by individual consumers. Now, when I say a tiny Mac in a tiny box, we have to keep in mind that while the current Mac Mini isn't as mini as it could be, back in 2005, that thing was microscopic. This is how tiny it is. It's almost remarkable to see how consistent the branding for the Mac Mini has been over all these years. It is and always has been BYO DKM. BYO DKM. It means bring your own display, keyboard, and mouse. Okay? Steve Jobs even explicitly said at the time that the Mini was designed not just to be affordable, but to tempt those who had been hesitant to switch from their PCs. And we want to price this Mac so that people that are, you know, thinking of switching will have no more excuses. <laughs> people that want a second Mac in their household or a third or a fourth, really gonna be easy. And honestly, it's still doing that 17 years later. I couldn't tell you how many times I've had emails where people said, I just bought my first Mac, it's an M1 Mac Mini, and I love it. And I also have to say, looking back on this thing, there are a lot of surprising similarities to the current Mac Studio. For example, its cooling architecture is nearly identical. It intakes air through vents around the bottom of the device, and it exhausts through a rear vent above the vertically mounted rear I.O just like the new one. But one thing that has changed, and the reason the refurbished Mac Mini is so important, is just how cheap it is. In 2005, the Mac Mini launched for $499, which, when adjusted for inflation, is $734 today, about the same as the current Mac Mini. But for $589 on Apple's refurbished store, this thing is by far and away the cheapest Mac Apple has ever sold and it's a really good one. And that's why this tiny, plain aluminum box is so important. It is the most accessible, most affordable computer that Apple has made in its entire 45-year history. And this refurbished one is over $100 cheaper than that. And to be honest, I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't buy the refurbished one. I mean, we're talking about a difference of over $100, and the only thing that you will ever notice that is different between them is that there's no picture of it on the box. The condition, as we saw in the unboxing, is absolutely flawless. You still get the one-year warranty. You can still add Apple Care. There is no reason not to save $100 on what's already Apple's cheapest computer. And we know that the M1 chip is extremely capable in whatever form it comes. It's, you know, MacBook Air, it's a MacBook Pro, it's an iMac, it's this, it's an iPad. There are so many different flavors, but this is 
the cheapest one. And in my opinion, it's also the most versatile because if you wanna buy an iPad, a MacBook, or an iMac, you're locked into the M1 system that you're sold. Whether it's a 10.9 inch iPad, a 13 inch laptop, or a 24 inch iMac, this gives you the option to do whatever you want. You can do what I did and plug it into a 5K iMac and you can have a 5K Apple Silicon experience without having to buy a studio display. And if minimalism is your main concern, let me address that for you because all you have to do is put the Mac mini under the desk. There you go. Looks just like a normal iMac, right? But you're running Apple Silicon, you got a 5K display, and you have a lot more ports than you do with the 4K iMac. You can go on and on for a thousand years discussing different potential use cases for the M1 Mac Mini. And that's part of the reason that I love it. It can be whatever you want it to be. You wanna buy a bunch of them and put them in a server rack? Sure, why not? You wanna buy one of them and use it as a home theater PC? You can do that too. Wanna to take it apart and put it inside an old iMac? Go for it. You wanna take one apart, rewire it to use MagSafe and build it into a much smaller enclosure? Well, you can do that as well. You can disassemble the Mac Mini, the entire thing, with a dozen screws. That's how many screws hold this thing together. It, how simple is that? I legitimately cannot think of a better product for less than $600 than this. Sure, could you theoretically buy a PC that's more powerful? I'm sure you could, but you can also build an entire PC for the same price as it costs to upgrade the RAM in an Apple Silicon Mac, so that's not exactly an achievement. And it certainly is not a reflection on the experience. And this Mac Mini has a fantastic experience. Emphasis on the fan, because this thing has one and doesn't really need it, and the result of that is you can absolutely hammer this thing and you will never hear it. That is not true of any other computer of this size, except for the Mac Studio, but that's kind of like the same thing, but taller. In fact, come to think of it, I've been looking at the Mac Studio for so long that this thing looks like really short and flat by comparison. Let me know what you guys think about that. But more importantly, let me know what you guys think about a refurbished $589 Mac Mini. Would you spend a little bit of extra money and get one with more storage or more unified memory? Or do you think this base model is pretty much all you need? Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.